Today on The Practical Pro Musician, are there people in your life who seem like they're just not supporting you in your pursuit of being a professional musician? Is there something you might want to listen to them about? Or maybe not. Let's talk about it. Stay tuned. We love playing music, but it seems like the odds of making a living as a professional musician are about as high as winning the lottery. So the big question is this, how do musicians like us with jobs, families, and responsibilities get from where we are today to making a practical living playing music we love? Well, my name is Daniel Hathaway, and this show will give you the answers. This is The Practical Pro Musician. Well, hello once again. Welcome back to another edition of The Practical Pro Musician. My name's Daniel. I'm so glad that you've joined me once again here, wherever you are, in your car, on the treadmill, or on your smart speaker, wherever else you might be listening to a podcast. I listen to mine, listen to pod, I don't listen to my own podcast. Um, that would be a little, little crazy. Um, but uh, no, I listen to the podcast that I listen to. Um, I listen to them while I'm driving around town. It's always, uh, you know, I work from home and so I don't get a chance. This is not a bad thing, uh, objectively, or, or, you know, the big picture, this is not a bad thing, but I don't get a chance to uh, listen to, to podcasts for very long normally because um, I live in a small town, everything's pretty close by. Um, so I don't, I, you know, I don't have a long commute or anything like that to take up a lot of time. Um, with, with listening to podcasts. So I, I listen to it while I'm, you know, listen to them while I'm doing stuff around the house sometimes too. Um, and things like that. Anyway, whatever you're doing, wherever you are, I'm just glad that we're spending this time together, you and me. So, uh, I, this week, uh, I, I, I've mentioned this a lot. Um, but I, I have a small group of, of musicians that I'm kind of working more closely with, uh, month to month. Um, on their music careers. And, uh, I recently, uh, we recently did a little class, a little topic where we talked about, um, about getting your family on board with your pursuit of a music career. And, uh, there's, there's one specific piece of it that I thought it'd be, it'd be helpful to share with you today. Um, and, uh, of course we went into like, you know, a lot of detail and what we talked about, but there's one little piece that I think without going into insane amounts of detail might, you might find helpful. So, um, that is this, um, if you remember back, uh, I don't watch, I don't watch the show American Idol anymore, but I do remember, um, early on, like the first couple of seasons, um, it, I definitely watched it. I think I might've been, I can't remember what year it came out. I, I, I want to say that I was, I I'd already graduated high school maybe when it came out anyway. Um, I, I was relatively young, younger. And, uh, a, a big thing that, that was, a was, it was a, a selling point of that show early on was not only the good auditions and the amazing, inspirational, incredible talent that you, you see on that, but then everyone loved to laugh at the really terrible auditions. And I think that's kind of, I don't think that's as big of a part of the show anymore. I've heard that it's not. And I definitely, as I've gotten older, maybe I just, I've just seen enough of it. I always feel bad now laughing at people who, um, who, who think they're, they're really good at singing and, and, and they're, they're definitely not. Um, I kind of feel, kind of feel bad for them now. So I don't really enjoy watching that kind of stuff anymore too much. Um, and, and thankfully I think they've kind of taken that, they've kind of dialed that back a little bit on the show, but I do remember from those times of watching those early episodes of American Idol where, where they, they were showing a lot of people who were not very good that almost inevitably there, there were two, I'd say there people fell into two camps. These people who came in audition to weren't very good. Um, and I'd say, I'd say 80% were in this first camp and 20% were in the other camp. Now 80% always would say they don't, I remember they start to ask these people after the audition, like, what are your, like, what do your friends and family say about, about your singing? And about 80% of the time, the, per, the person would say, well, my, my friends and family or my family tells me, especially my family, they tell me that I'm great. Um, that, that uh, you know, that, that, that I have a wonderful voice. They love my voice. And you can always just imagine those conversations 
where it's probably, it's probably someone who, uh, the family member is probably someone who just really cares for that person and they, and they, they don't know how to tell them and they, they just want to support them in whatever they want to do. And so they're, they're being supportive. They don't really understand. They don't really think that that person's very good, but they just can't say anything. They don't want to discourage the person. So they just go along with it. Then the other 20% of people will say something like, well, everyone tells me I can't make it, but I know they're just, you know, some people, some people are really delusional. And they're like, they're just jealous of my voice. Uh, and they're, they're trying to trying to bring me down. Uh, but either way, um, it, it reminded me that you that all of us, whether it's friends or family, there's going to be people in our music career and our pursuit of, of music as a career, just our pursuit of music, just as something we want to do more of you're going to have friends and family that are aware of what you're doing and everyone's going to have a reaction to that. Um, that's an interesting thing about saying that you're a musician or being a musician is that almost everybody has an opinion on it. Um, and that can be really great when, when the opinion is, uh, very supportive and, and, and they want to help you out and they want to encourage you to do everything that you can to, to make that a reality for yourself. Um, but then it's also not very exciting when, everyone has an opinion and a lot of those opinions are always just negative. And so I just wanted to remind you today that, um, that really people are going to fall into, there's four different camps basically, and I'm not going to go through all of them, but basically people are either going to understand what you're doing or they're not going to understand what you're doing. And then as a response to that, they're either going to support you or not support you. Um, and, and by, by support, I mean like telling you that you need to go forward or not and, and, and all of that. Um, and so every combination of those two, you can draw a little, little uh, you know, a little forking diagram where, you know, from, from understand you have yes or no. And then you have out of those two options, you have two more options of supportive or not supportive. Um, and you'll end up with four things. Um, and each of those have different dynamics that you can kind of play out in your own mind and, and figure out. But I want to draw attention to to one group that that I think a lot of times we don't give enough credit to, and this is not to discourage you at all. But if there are people in your life that you could actually say, yes, they do understand what you're trying to do or what you're what you're going after, but then no, they're not supportive, which means they might be just cautioning you against something. Um, you need to dig a little deeper into that. And there's actually a, a, a way that you can break out those two, uh, that scenario into two other options. So if someone understands what you're doing, but they're not supportive, if you think they're not supportive, ask yourself this question. Is, is this person not supportive of your overall pursuit of music? Or are they cautioning you against specific pieces of your plan? And they might be doubtful about whether those are the right things to do or not. And if they fall into that second camp, the they're doubtful about certain pieces of your plan. Those are the people that you probably should at least listen to and give some serious thought to what they're saying, because they're not actually trying to discourage you necessarily from doing what you dream of. They are just saying they, they perceive certain things from the outside looking in that maybe you don't. And it, they're not saying don't, don't move forward with your dream and your plan of becoming a professional musician. They're actually saying you might want to try a different way of attaining that same goal. And it's worth listening to those people. Even if at the end of the day, you decide that um, you want to keep going the way that you're going and you want to keep doing the things you want to do, but at least listen to those folks because they actually can be very helpful um, and alert you to some pitfalls before you see them coming. Sometimes Um, you you don't want to have anybody say, I told you so. Um, after a big mess up in your music career. So pay attention to those folks if they come along. All right. Thank you so much for joining me today here on the Practical Pro Musician. I can't wait to talk to you again next week here at the same place, same time, wherever you are. All right. My name is Daniel, if I didn't mention that already, and I appreciate you listening. We'll talk again next week. Bye for now.